Hey, welcome back to Stylecraft. We are talking about tone today. And what you see in front of you right here is my After Effects project where I created a style frame based around tone. So everything in here is black and white, uh, which is a lot of times the easiest way to work with tone uh, before we add color in. So we can come up with really um, awesome, amazing designs in black and white only. And that's where we're only focused on the darks and the grays and the light values. And it makes, uh, if you make a really powerful design with black and white gray values, then once you add color, then it's even more interesting to look at. It's even a cooler uh, design uh, to look at. So we are going to design uh, this style frame, but I'm gonna do it a little bit different this time. Uh, we're not gonna start from scratch. I'm just gonna break down this project file and tell you how I created this. So easiest way I think to do that is to probably just start soloing some layers here. So this very first layer here is just a very simple star map. And it's just an image from NASA or some telescope. And it's just a star map. And what I did here is it started like this. It's just a blue tinted image. I applied a black and white filter, which made it black and white. And then I just applied some levels and very subtle levels here. I don't even know if you guys can notice this in the recording, but um, if I turn it off, on, off, on, just a little bit more contrast to even image is all I did by just applying some levels. And you can see the levels here. I just adjusted the blacks, off, on. Okay, so that's the first part. Very challenging, I know, but uh, not really. So anyway, so then I, uh, added a mask and this mask was set to add so that we're only looking at this top part of the image. And the reason I did that is I wanted to create more of a landscape back here um, and just have the star field up here. So um, if I did turn this mask off, you can see it's being shown through here, um, which is kind of interesting in itself too. That's, you know, kind of a different, totally different look. Um, but I wanted to create kind of like a landscape or maybe this planet's kind of sitting there. So to do that, I had to mask this background off and um, I'll show you why here in just a second. So the next thing is I added a texture, right? This is all this is, is a texture. So if I reveal this, uh, let's see here, reveal in Finder and I pull this up, you're gonna see all this is, is just a texture. I actually love using this texture. I use this texture and quite a few of my designs. Um, I can't remember if I've used it yet this year with you guys, um, but in some of, the, some of the stuff I've used on social media, like Instagram that I've posted, I've used this texture. So uh, for whatever reason, I love this texture. And I come back to it all the time. It's just a very simple still image um, of this texture. So close that down. So all it is is it's brought into this uh, this composition, and you can see here um, it is set to a transformative screen, which is why I had to mask off the stars in the background because the black values uh, disappear with screen. So if I did not mask those values out, you know that's how we saw through the texture to the star uh, background. So I masked out the stars. I've got the, the texture here. If I turn everything back on again, um, I have a mask here on the texture layer, but um, I kind of played around with that. So right now it's set to actually off and that's what the, this image looks like. If I set it to uh, subtract, which is what I played around with, it makes the planet look a little bit more, oh, maybe ethereal and that the, the landscape um, is a little more subtle. So I like this look a lot. Um, I also like this look. This look looks a little bit more like the planet's resting on this terrain. Like maybe they collided or or something like that, which I kind of dug a little bit more. Um, but like I said, I could set this back to subtract. And that's the look there. So whenever designing uh, style frames, it's always fun to play around and just get totally different looks just by very simple things like here, just using a mask, right? So that's that part. And then I've got my 3D layer here, which this is just a Cinema 4D file with a simple mask on it as well. And you'll see here that this mask is set to subtract as well. If I hit it to none, you're gonna see the planet appear 
right there. Very, very subtle. But it's just taking away a little bit of the planet down here uh, to make it sit better in with this terrain. Here we're going to see it a little bit better. None. So there you go. See the planet pops on right there. If I go back to subtract, there it is. So it blends in better here with the uh, with the landscape. None. Subtract. So there's that. So now let's jump in to the uh, Cinema 4D file. And I'll show you how I did that. It's really simple. So here we are in the Cinema 4D file. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and this is just a very simple scene. I've set it up to 1920 by 1080. It's 30 frames a second because this is a single style frame. A lot of times I work in 24. We've talked about uh, in the past, but uh, 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. I'm sorry. Um, and this is really simple. So if I s turn off the light here, you can see everything a lot better. Um, there's just a simple camera in the scene. Uh, just to get kind of the positioning I wanted on the planets. Um, there's a light, which I'll turn back on here in a minute. But all this is, is is a sphere, which is my main planet, set to a radius of 100 centimeters. Um, I've got another sphere, which is my front planet, which I just brought you know forward in Z space right here. And I've got a back planet back here that's just set back in Z space here. And then I've got a ring and another ring, right? And these are really simple too. This is just uh, the inner radius is set to uh, a high value compared to the outer radius. So inner is a 198, outer is 200. Um, and that makes this really thin ring. So if I you know, decrease this, this is kind of like the default um, of a tube, which is what these are. But if I undo that, There we go. And I've also turned up the rotation segments to 144 because a lot of times they default to like a lower number, like say 72, um, which you can't really notice so much here. But if this radius was a lot smaller and I bring these down, let's say to 24, you can see it gets a lot more jagged. See there, so that's what the rotation segments do. So I'm gonna undo this. And just to show you, um, if you're confused, you can see right here, it's a tube. All I have to do is go up here to create object. Uh, where are you at, tube? Tube, there's the default tube. Like I said, I brought the inner radius up to 198. The outer radius was the default 200. And then I brought the height all the way down like so, to like one. And then I increased the rotation segments and there, is how we created it. Very simple stuff. So it's just spheres, one, two, three spheres, and two tubes, right? That's all it is. And then it's two simple textures. And I'll tell you why here in just a second, why there's two textures. But all I did uh, for these textures is I just created a, I'll start over here. I'll make a new texture. Brand new texture, just by double clicking down here, creates a texture. I turned off reflectance and I, left color on and I just went in to the texture here and I said, okay, I just want to add some noise. And there's my noise and I just can click and it opens up this noise texture. And all I played with was the global scale. So if you look right here, global scale is hundred. If I go down, like, let's just make it really a lot smaller. See how fine that grain gets. If I make it back to 40, the grain's going to get bigger. See that? That's all I did. I took it down to a grain scale of, what is this? 17%. That's all I did. And then I just drug it onto my sphere and onto this sphere, this sphere, and even the rings. It's one texture, right? But I created a second texture for this back planet right here and I'll show you why. So I'll turn my light back on and you'll see my light here is just an area light. That's all it is. So to create an area light, we just go up here to light, area light. It starts in the center and 
I just kind of moved it up and I moved it out and I moved it up and you can see here right here in the watch if you watch this planet here you can see what it's doing oh something like so but with the light here you can see how bright this back planet is right and inside of After Effects when I applied glows and things like that this planet was really really bright in fact, I'll just go back into After Cinema and I'll apply the original texture that I applied to all these spheres and rings. I'll apply that back to this planet back here. And I'm going to save and I'll go back in After Effects and watch how bright the planet gets right here as it updates. See that? It gets so bright and I it was just it was too distracting to me. It should be much more subtle back there in the background. So back in Cinema, I created a second texture just for this planet. And the trick to making this just a little bit darker is very simple. I just actually copied the original texture so it has the noise here in the color. And then I turned on diffusion. It defaults to 100%. I just turned it right down to 50 and voila. There's my darker planet back here. So if I save, And I go back into After Effects. You'll see it get dark again. So that's all I wanted to do. If I wanted it even darker, I could go back into uh, Cinema here. I could actually darken it up maybe just maybe down to 35%. Save. Back into After Effects. Here it goes. There. I like that a little bit better, actually. So that's all that is. Very simple. Three spheres. One, two, three and two tubes that make up these rings and then two textures one texture that's applied to everything except for this guy and this guy is just a duplicate of the texture with the diffuse channel set to 50 percent super simple and a light if you have no lights this is what your scene looks like very blah and that's because uh, cinema actually always puts a, a default hidden light in your scene so that everything's lit up it's just so you can see everything. So if you're working in cinema and you're working with shapes, you have to be able to see them. So there's a default light there. It actually turns off whenever you add any type of light to your scene. So we'll go back into After Effects. Here we are. It's going to update slightly because my light. There we go. So there is our planet, right? So what I did next is I wanted to add a, uh, a ring layer, a shape layer inside here, inside of After Effects. I could have done this in Cinema 4D, but I decided to go uh, into After Effects to do this. So all this is is a shape layer, right? If I turn off 3D and I scale it back up, you're going to see this is just a very simple shape layer. Okay, and it's got a mask on it, which is why it's kind of cut off there. Let's undo that, go back to 3D. And there we are. And um, let me So because I have this 3D layer here, um I need it to interact with the scene, right? So I needed a light and a camera to make the scene interact. Otherwise, um, if I was to just build this brand new, if I was to make a new shape layer, and I double clicked on the, oh, the ellipse tool here, there's my shape layer. If I was to make this 3D without a camera, it's just there. It doesn't know where to go. It doesn't know where to where it should be in the scene. Um, but by adding a camera, it's going to know where to go. Now, it's disappeared, right? So let me turn off the original shape layer here. This shape layer is, um, is now gone because the default zero out point for um, After Effects is always 960 by 540. Or if your comp is a different size, like 2048, it's always half of whatever the width is and half of the height, right? Halfway of 1920 by... 1080. So 1920, half of that is 960, which would be in here, and half of 1080 is 540, which is right here. 
Well, inside of Cinema, everything defaults to 0, 0, right? There's no 960 by 540. The center point of this scene is always 0, 0. So we have to center out our shape layer to 0, 0, right? Now you can see the center point's right in the center of our Cinema scene. So that works. Now, how did I get this camera to be lined up right? Well, I talked about this in the form lesson. It's, um, I just extracted a camera from the scene and it extracts a light and a camera. So it tries to match the camera from Cinema 4D and it tries to extract the light. Well, After Effects doesn't use uh, area lights like after, like Cinema 4D does. So it's just going to default to like it's uh, a parallel light inside of After Effects, which I can talk about here in a minute. But I know I'm jumping around a lot, but I'm just trying to explain things to you guys. So we've got our camera here in After Effects. It now reads the shape layer. The shape layer is way too big, which is why we can't really see it. So if I just scale it down, you're going to see it's coming into the scene. And then all I did was I just went to the rotation. I said, OK, rotate on the X 90 degrees. And there it is. There's our, our ring around our planet right now this is not a perfect ring because the ellipse uh, built it out at where's the size here 1920 by 1080 because that's where comp was so if i make it square i'd make it 1080 by 1080 and there it is so now it still looks a little bit weird because it's going in front of the planet and it's going in the back of the planet right so that's weird so if i turn that layer off go back to my original one that's why I have a mask here, right? I have a mask, which is on a solid layer above here. So this is just a solid with three masks on it. Mask one, mask two, and mask three. So I'm saying I want to see this part, and I want to see this part, and I want to see this part. But I'm not seeing back here. And if I turn this back off, that's why... We can't see the ring behind the planet here, but we can see it in front, on the side, and on the side, right? And I've just set these to feather uh, 10 pixels all the way around just to kind of um, make it look a little nicer. I mean, I could go in here and I could really fine tune this edge. It's a little bit off maybe. Um, but that's how we make the ring look like it's actually going around and then behind it. And then the shape layer is just, if I open it up, you're gonna see here, it is a stroke path with a dash applied to it, right? I just added the dash by clicking the plus button. And then I just played with the settings and I, I've decided that 42 was kind of a setting I like, because you can see here it's moving, it's getting further apart. So this is really big dashes, which that's kind of interesting in itself. Um, I could go the opposite way. I could go below 42. I could go way down here and it starts to fill in, which is not what I want, but maybe. So there's really tight rings around it. So it's all a matter of just playing around and finding what works for me. I decided I liked this setting right here. So there's our ring with our uh, alpha mat set to the solid above it, right? Which is just our mask. And the reason I did this is because you can add mass to shape layers, but it gets very kind of strange. Um, whenever you apply a mass to a shape layer, that shape layer wants to say, oh, this isn't a mask. This is actually a shape and I should draw this. Um, so I kind of stay away from adding mass to shape layers because it does get confusing. I find it easier just to create a solid, make it an alpha or luma mat and apply my mass to that solid. Okay, so what's next? So next, I when I extracted from the Cinema 4D file right here, when I hit extract, it brings out everything from the Cinema 4D it can bring out from that file. It brought out the camera and it brought out the light, right? So that's where this light came from. And boom, there is the light. Now I'm gonna extract again, and I'm gonna show you what I had to do to make this look the way it does. And I, I used the light because I wanted this ring, um, I wanted less focus on it on this uh, dashed ring we, shape layer we made here in After Effects. So, you know, that's created by using a light. So without light, with light, without light, with light. So it just gives a little bit more depth to the image, right? A little bit more uh, tone as well, because we're going from bright values here to dark values over in here. 
So if I turn this one off and I go back to my Cinema 4D file and I just say extract, it's creating a second camera, which I don't need. Extra light, all that jazz. So there is my light, right? And I can't see my shape layer because the light is way up in here. Um, that's where the light was in Cinema 4D, it thinks. And um, it's using a parallel light, which I am not a fan of parallel lights. So if I go to light options, I can see right here, it's set to parallel. I just changed it. Well, if I change it to point immediately, you're gonna see, boom, there it is, right? And that's creating some tone because it's brighter here and it's darker over here. But I found that um, I could play with the spotlight and make it look even more interesting. Um, I think I did turn the intensity down as well. Yeah, I turned it down to 150. Um, with just This is just you know a matter of playing around with the lights as well. Um, but we could do the trick where we look through the light that I showed you guys in a previous lesson. Um, or I could just go to two views here. This is a custom view. And I say, okay, where's my shape? There's my shape layer right there. And see my light right here. My, my light's actually pointing back. It's up above the shape layer and it's just pointing straight back, which is why I can't see anything over here. So the first thing I would do is I'd probably play with my, um, oh, probably my rotation. Let's see, yeah, make it kind of point down. And you can see right here, I'm starting to see it right here. And I'm, over here, I'm seeing it as well. Um, maybe I'll mess with my Y rotation. Yep, more of it's coming in for sure at this point. Maybe more X, yeah. So there you go. So we're seeing definitely more seeing more of it here. The Z is not going to do anything. This is just rotating it like so. Um, I could also play with my point of interest, maybe. See what that does. Yeah, not doing too much there. So back to my rotation. I'm just going to play with this until I find something I kind of like. Kind of matches what I want to do here. Yeah, so that's a little bit darker uh, than my original right there, but that's pretty interesting as well. I do like that. Um, so that's how you come up with uh, giving the the shape layers or any, even any other 2D layers or 2.5D layers that are in After Effects. If I had some typography in here or something, you know, it's going to react to that light um, and it's going to make it uh, darker or brighter based on that light and it's going to match it to the uh, light from, from Cinema 4D. So... Um, Let's see here. Let's go back in here. So now what we've got, we've got the 3D in here. We've got the light. We've got the camera. Um, we've got some, we've got the background we added in already. We've got the terrain that we added in. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of atmosphere. So it's just starting to look pretty interesting, right? Just from some very simple uh, a shape layer and a very simple 3D and a very simple texture, which looks like a terrain, right? So the next thing I did is I added a little bit of um, smoke behind the planet here. And all this is, is this is from um, Action VFX, um, which the, you know, they've been generous enough to give us uh, some footage for you guys to use. So this is ProRes 2K footage uh, that you guys can use for these projects. Uh, it's really cool stuff. All this is, if I turn all these back off, actually, let me not do that. Let me show you. Reveal this in the project, and then I'll just bring it to its own composition here. And you can see this is just smoke that's blowing in from the side and then kind of dissipates up and outwards, right? That's all it is. So what I did is I just said, I just kind of, it started at zero on the timeline. It started at zero, which if I take it back to zero, it's gone, right? And I just kind of, pushed it forward in space and I found that 59 I liked it you know about 59 frames into it and all I did was I just moved it up here so it starts down right here that's the default position and I just pulled it right up in here and I liked the way it was looking right there just I wanted to create a little bit of atmosphere coming off of the planet right I could also even duplicate this now that I'm looking at it uh, and bring one in front of the planet um, if I wanted to do that and just give a little bit of atmosphere right here. And if I did that, I would probably just go ahead and mask it off. Oh, like so. And then I'd feather it quite a bit. And then I would 
get rid of this edge here. I just maybe bring it up like that. So this is in front of the planet and this is just behind. So I, I do kind of like that. It's interesting. Uh, the other thing I did is I brought in another piece of footage from Action VFX, which is this uh, ground fog. And this ground fog, if I take it to its own composition, here it is at zero, zero. Really cool, it's just some fog, smoky kind of stuff they shot on black that just stays close to the ground. Really cool stuff. I just brought it in here, brought it to the top, and took it back about 169 frames because I liked it right in there where it was at. Oh, and I should also add that I added a levels effect to it, right? And this is without levels, this is with levels. All this is, is I just adjusted the black and the gray values, right? So if I reset this, there it is. If you watch right here, undo it. It's just bringing the blacks in. Um, same thing was done to the smoke down here. Um, I think I just barely played with the gray values of it. Yeah, just to make it a little more subtle because without levels, there it is. With levels, it's more subtle. So you can always bring in atmospheric effects, but it doesn't have to be like in your face kind of effects. You know, they can be much more subtle and effective that way. So uh, again, the ground fog in the front, that's without levels. This is with levels. Very subtle atmosphere, but it brings a lot of depth and um, interest to this design because it is there. And, um, you know, it helps with the tone because it's white on black, right? So again, it's these white values that make us, uh, it draws our eye, our attention to that part of the frame because it's, it's a contrast of black and white uh, values. Okay, so if I turn the stars back on, there they are, they're back on. Now let me show you the fog, ground fog is off and on. See how much uh, depth it really adds to this entire design. It makes all the difference, right? It even affects the 3D because it's above it and it's set to a screen mode. Um, so really cool stuff. I've got another solid layer up here, which is a, just a black solid with a giant mass set to, set to subtract. And all that is is just to darken up the foreground right here. I just wanted a little bit less there. We could have done this with a vignette uh, effect, but this is the same kind of effect right here. I'm just, um, and I actually want to bring this down a little bit more. I like a little bit more of that foreground. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then I think is the very last thing. I just have an effect layer going on, which is right here. And if I change this to effects, uh, you'll see that it sits below the ground fog. Um, and that's because I did not like the way that it uh, affected the ground fog. I made it too bright kind of threw everything off. So I put it down here. If I turn this guy on, there's our effect. And seeing, yeah, I don't like the foreground fog that I added above the planet. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that guy off. So on the effects, real simple, what's going on here? If I start from the beginning, so no effects. If I turn, I started with grain and I just picked a simple preset uh, in the grain. Um, and there it is. I would love to add grain to everything. It just brings a, a, a different uh, level of realism to the image. It's not so digital. You can really see it down in here. So with grain, without, with, without. And it also helps to blend everything together. Then I add a glow layer, which is here. And this is with, without, with, without. I added a second glow. In the second glow, I turned the threshold uh, down so that it only really affected up in here and a little bit here. So with, without, with, without. So I added that. And then as a final effect, I added glow noise. And you can see here, I made it very vertical uh, versus uh, more of a uh, circle shape. And this is just to give this planet some extra noise. Like there's something maybe radiating off of it. So, and this was just, I played around with the settings just a little bit, and that was that. So if I unsolo everything, it should look exactly the same, and it does, and there is our planetary system landscape um, created with tone.
Okay, so now that we've got our tone, we use tone to design this in black and white. It's really easy to go in now and add color and make our design even that much more powerful, that much more interesting to look at. So just a real simple way to do that is to use something like from Video Copilot, right? Andrew Kramer, the god of After Effects, uh, he's got this free plugin, plugin called Go Color Vibrance. Man, I'm just stuttering a lot today. So if I apply that, boom, it immediately applies this kind of vibrant look to our entire image. Um, I could go and I could change this to something like, I don't know, purple, kind of give it this retro 80s purple pink vibe. That's pretty cool. I'm digging that. Um, but that's just an example of like an overlay of color wash. You could add, you know, I could go in, I could colorize just the, um, if I turn this off, I could colorize just this ring. Um, I could do something like, um, you know, it's a gray value. I could make it. Oh, it's just, I love pink right now. So that's cool. Um, you could go in, you could colorize a planet, you could colorize the terrain, the, the smoke, whatever. You get the idea. Adding color now is an extra um, added layer of dimensionality, an extra layer of cool factor to our design, and it makes it that much more interesting to look at. So that's what I've got for you uh, this week on designing a style frame. Now I think it's time for me to do a bonus lesson for you. And I want to do a bonus lesson where I actually animate this because I know a lot of you have asked, you know, how do you go about animating things? And I've tried to show that over the weeks, but I think if I show you some more, it'll help you guys. So let's move on to the next lesson, the bonus lesson on animating the style frame.